If you're new to programming in Godot, you might ignore this thing from the start, but it is very important. In the previous video, we talked about organizing your project, but another important thing is actually styling your code. Your code needs to be readable, easy to understand, well documented, and just overall well written. Now, before we get into the script part of this video, first of all, I see too many people naming their nodes like this. They have inconsistent naming. For example, they add spaces, which you definitely should not do this. Instead, you should be using Pascal case, for example, like right here. When you create a node, it will automatically uses Pascal case for you. But if you do something like this, it will get very confusing because you don't have a convention set in place. If you have an established way of naming things, it might not be exactly this, but you should probably do this because that's how Godot does it. And if you don't rename one of your nodes, it will fit in with everything else that you have in your scene. And we also touched on this briefly in the last video. For example, here you should be naming your files in snake case way so you have confusing main menu right and you should not be adding any special characters i mean i guess you can't but it shouldn't be like this one for example confusing we just start with capital letter then we add a space then main menu dot tscn that is not good we talked about this in the previous video because it will not work on linux hey a bit of an update on the previous video I said it wouldn't work on linux because it's case sensitive actually it's the other way around it won't work on Windows and Mac OS. This is what this line is saying. I misunderstood it and I wanted to correct myself. You should also still use snake case when naming project files and folders. So you don't get errors in your project. But now let's go into the actual styling of the script and how you should write a script properly. Okay, you might have noticed that I've created a guide here on the right to help you understand and learn faster how to write better code. So if we go by this guide, we can see that here on the top, we have the tool script. So you have a tool script, you add that first, then you have the class name and extends. So if your script is extending from another script, this always is the case. But if you have a special class name, or you're trying to create a special class name, in this case is main menu, you add that. I prefer it this way. Guru also says that you should do it like this, but that's preference. I like it being in the same line. It reminds me of C sharp and that's what I'm using right now. Then you have declaration of signals, as you can see here from the cheat sheet. And then we have two examples, one of good naming scheme and the other one is with the bad one. So here in the good one, we have button pressed, as you can see here. Signals need to be in past tense, they are, and they also need to be in snake case. So here I provide an example, menu opened, here I have button press, they're different, doesn't matter. And then if you're passing something or you're requiring to pass something, you do button and then I statically type texture button. So we know exactly what is required. If I leave it empty like this, yes, it might be a button, but what kind of a button? You could leave it as the base button, but this is much better because you know exactly what it is. Also here, we have capital letter, then underscore capital letter, then lower letter, lowercase letter, which does not make any sense. And if you keep it in this style, you will know that it is a signal. This is how Godot does it. If you paid attention, they already do this. Then we have enums from here, from the script order. We see that we have enums. So this is a good naming scheme for an enum. From here, we can see that the name for the enum needs to be in Pascal case. So that means a capital letter, then another capital letter for the other word. Instead of adding spaces, you do you do them in the same line, but you capitalize the other starting letter. So here, good, capital letter enum, right? Then if you have any variables, I mean, you will have them. You should be naming them with the constant case because they are actually constants in the background and it makes sense. So you know that this does not change. It's constant. It's always going to be this. So you don't get confused. All this styling guide is to help you understand much easier of how things are coded and how they work. For example, here in the bad enum case, we have snake case way so you don't know that this is an enum and then you have 
lowercase, uppercase, you know, it's random. It doesn't make any sense. And you don't know that they're constants. Here, it's very understandable that everything with constant case is constant and it doesn't change. For example, here, then we have the constants from the script order. We have good delay, so everything is in constant case. And this means that this value never changes. It's constant. That's what the name implies. Here in the bad delay, you have Pascal case, but this is a constant. And if you have it this way and then you change it to something like this, you will get confused. Also, if you're declaring floats, do not leave it like this. Actually add the zero here, for example, so you know that it is a float. I do this sometimes myself. I forget to add the number or more likely like 0 0.5 instead of writing it like this i sometimes write it like this which is not good you should not do it just add the zero in front <laughs> not that big of a deal i guess but it does make it much more readable this way right especially if you're working with a team these things will make a big difference because if you have one person coding one way and you have another person coding a different way then when you're analyzing your code you will get confused. Wait, this is this, this is what what is this? Like you will be lost in the code and you will not understand a single thing. Okay, then if we go in the script order, we have the export variables. So export variables, you add the at export, right? We already know this. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't. But this is pretty self-explanatory. You could also have this as a private variable, as you can see right here. We'll go over it in a bit. But if this is a private one, you will just add the dash, for example, here. I mean, I guess let's go right now. So yeah, then you have the public and the private variables. The difference between a public and a private variable is you add the underscore if it's a private variable. That means that this variable is local to this script and you should not be accessing it from another script. So that's why you add the underscore to know that it is private variable. So here, another thing that I want to point out, the new version, you have arrays and dictionaries with types now. So you should, if you're using static typing, you should definitely add this. And then if you're declaring variables, if it is short, like one, two, three, or you can keep it like one line, you, you should be able to do it this way. But for example, here in the dictionary, let me move this a bit so you can see, you have in the dictionary you have many different ones you should be doing them each in their own row as you can see here i also forgot the comma you should always add a comma at the end so if you're creating a different one and you didn't add the comma you'll get an error it also is nice and stylistic to add the comma here so for example i have resolution language whatnot this is just an example don't pay attention to the code you know it's not the best code i just created this to showcase how you should be writing but not how to code i guess okay so then come the on ready variables from here you can see we have on ready variables so we have on ready panel container right so this is a public variable right now and it is on ready so i basically dragged it from here as you can see here, let me move this. This is what Godot does in the background. It just copies the name from here, right? And it gets the node. But if you do this, like if you want to try do this yourself, this will be so confusing. So that's why I said you should definitely not do this. Please stick to Pascal case or some another way of doing it. But this is how Godot does it. And I feel like it is a decent, good way to do it. So you should definitely maybe stick to this, but at least follow some convention. Then you have the init, the enter tree on ready built in functions. So these go in a row like this. Most of the time you might not have an init function or even an enter tree. But a lot of the times you will have an ready function, like right here. As you can see here, we have a signal. We know this. And then we do connect and then underscore good button press. From the underscore at the beginning, we know that this is a private function, right? It's the same way with public variables. From here, from the cheat sheet, we can see that public functions also are snake case. Same way with the public and private variables and also the functions. But here, 
You see you have open menu, but here you have underscore open menu to indicate that this is a private function. This will not be accessible if you try to access it from another script. Then you have the remaining built-in functions, for example, on handle input, process, physics process, and whatnot. Then you have your own user declared functions. For example, I have this public function here. And please, one thing you want to take away from this, please do use static typing. It's so much better and you will become a better programmer by just using this. It will be difficult at the beginning, but please do use static typing. So here I have some example of a code. If you have an if statement, they say that you should be using the keywords if not so for example here i do if not right you could also do this this exclamation mark implies that it's not empty in this case so this is the same as this right uh, you should or also you can do and numbers is empty for example i don't know it doesn't matter you should be using these instead of or maybe or instead of this so it doesn't make sense the code here but it's just to explain so then you have a for loop you just do a normal for loop it's fine then you have the private function as i explained before and as you can see here i'm creating a timer on the tree and then we do good delay so we know this is a constant value and it will not change because we have proper naming conventions and anyone looking at this code understands that this value should not change and it should be this value and then we here we have an example for a comment so here this function name says is even so it basically checks if it's even but we're adding also a comment saying checks if it's even Sometimes you should definitely not be adding documentation if the function is self-explanatory. But if it is not, you should definitely add documentation. Because today you might know what it is, but come a week, a month later, a year later, who knows? And it's a huge function and you won't understand what it does without proper documentation. Also, you should not be having huge functions. You should split them into different functions, so it's much easier to read. Yes, please do keep in mind that you should be documenting everything. If you don't think you should be, you definitely should be. So after the remaining one, we have the public and the private functions from here. And that is what these are. And then you have subclasses. I forgot to put a example for that, but it's basically this, right? So you should be putting your subclasses right here. So you should be following these rules to some degree. Or you could change some of these things instead of maybe using snake case, maybe like Pascal case more. But if you're working in a team, please come up with a standard. Or if not, please do follow this because this is what most developers use and you should learn it. This will build a strong foundation for you so you can learn easier and faster. And in the future, when you're writing code and someone reads it, they understand that you understand the basics of writing code. You might not be the best coder, but if you know how to write properly code, people will understand it more and maybe you will even get a job or, or whatnot. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this one. That's all I wanted to say. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye.